uh, this week we are talking about the upcoming Aquarius um, new season, new zodiac season of Aquarius. Um, and it's going to be all about the season that's coming up between January 21st and runs until February 18th. Um, and I just need to note before we begin this that I am not an astrologer. I am a tarot reader. Um, that is my intuitive language. Um, I am certainly very interested in astrology. Uh, I value astrology very, very much. Um, and I'm picking up quite a bit about astrology and how wonderful, what a wonderful resource it is. Um, another modality, another tool um, around getting to know ourselves a little bit better, supporting ourselves a little bit better, and who doesn't want more of that? Um, but I work with an astrologer myself personally called Shadi, and she's at Atash Healing Arts, and I will link her information in the description of this video. Um, but I am not a qualified practitioner. Not yet anyways, who knows? <laughs> it speaks very, very um, strongly to my Virgo side, the astrology, about, you know, facts and um, charts and information that's like, you know, concrete. So, um, yeah, you never know. You never know. Um, but the more I work with this modality um, and the more I work with um, Shadi, I um, more I'm able to um, see the unbelievable value and the more I feel pulled to learn for myself. Okay, but I, dig I digress. That's gonna happen a lot in this podcast. <laughs> what I do know is that the tarot themes around the zodiac wheel for the year makes so much sense to me um, and so I'm here to share that aspect of things with you this, this month. So I'll look within the season um, there's always a really strong tarot links. Um, there's a very strong relationship between ast astrology and tarot anyways but um, there's some strong links between each season and certain tarot themes and cards. Um, and so that's what I'm here to share is around the, th the tarot of it. Um, if you want to learn more about how the tarot links with astrology, um, I talk about it a lot. Um, and also another great resource is this book, um, Tarot for Yourself by Mary Kay Greer. Um, she does a lot of wonderful, she has a lot of wonderful information in there about uh, learning about yourself through tarot, but all, all this really strong, or, yeah, through tarot, but really strong links with astrology as well, which I love. So that's a great resource. Um, and Shadi is a great resource. Um, and there's tons of other people as well. Um, but those are two of my favorites. So in this first video, um, that uh, official video, I've got an introduction video, it was my first official video um, for the upcoming Aquarius season. It's going to have a lot more detail. So this first time I do it, I'm going to have, I'm going to put in all the detail. I'm going to do all the detail that I usually would um, and more than I usually will in the future because I'm going to be actually saving a lot of the information for the wonderful folks who are in my um, membership area. Um, it's called self coaching for self coaching with the tarot. <laughs> so I do self coach. I do coaching with the tarot, and I've got a membership area called self coaching with the tarot. Um, and if you want to know a bit more about this area, you can head to the website. There will be an upcoming episode about it, um, and you can find out more information there. But I'm going to share as much as I can this time, just so that you have an idea of what kind of information would be shared over in the membership area. Um, and just to give you sort of a bigger taster for it. So we know Aquarius season runs from January 21st until February 18th. And the three cards involved, the three themes and cards are the star. I love this deck and I'll link this deck as well. It's an Etsy find. Um, the fool and the page of swords. So we know that the star is ruled by Aquarius, right? So, which is an air sign. I know some people, there's a lot of water, right, <laughs> involved um, in Aquarius and the star, but it's actually an air sign because it's around to do with our, our thoughts and the, the surroundings of the emotions and the feelings around <laughs> a lot of the water stuff. So it's an air sign. So that's our... Um, star and it's ruled by Aquarius and then Fool is ruled by 
Uranus, which is rules Aquarius. So they're very connected as well, which I love. And I'll get into this as well. And then this is um, Page of Swords, which has linked um, to this season as well. And I learned about that through um, Mary Greer, as well as Lindsay Mack on her over on her stuff as well. So she's, I'll link her stuff as well. She's got wonderful resources as well. Um, so this season, midwinter, uh, in the Northern Hemisphere, I live in Scotland, so very much impacted by Northern Hemisphere feels. There are wonderful tarot readers who work in the Southern Hemisphere and absolutely um, are a great resource for people who live there. My experience and time with tarot is in the Northern Hemisphere, so that's what I'll be referencing most of all. Um, so it really sees us in the peak of what, you know, midwinter, we're in, right in it, <laughs> midwinter, uh, and it sees us in the peak of what should and could be a real time personal and societal hibernation. Um, many of us find this season really nourishing and supportive for our foundation work. So getting quiet, cooling things down, calming things down, simplifying um, and examining sort of foundational stuff in preparation for the rest of the year. Um, yep. And a lot of us, <laughs> a lot of people find this time of year really, really difficult for a variety of reasons. Um, they might be dealing with the seasonal affective disorder or um, the drop after holiday festive season or um, just feeling like they're itching to break free and get out of the restraints of what they feel is restrictive restraints of the season. So um, I understand there's many ways to feel about this season. I personally love it. Um, it's one of my favorite times of year. I love from November until this time. Um, and I love all the seasons to be fair, but I really love this quiet time. I think it's a bit of an unpopular opinion <laughs> that I don't share too often because you could tell people are fed up, fed up of the winter. Um, but I really love the quiet after the festive season. I love time to focus on my desired habits and rituals. Um, I like the colder weather and I like the still early nights. <laughs> I love the opportunities for cold water swims. I'm a cold water swimmer and I love cold water, always have. Um, and I really love cozy warm fires and the excuse to light candles and fires. So this feels very much like a season for connecting, for me, for connecting with what's most important um, and giving focus to what I'd like to amplify, sort of what's in <laughs> and minimizing or releasing uh, what, no lo what no longer ser uh, serves me or soothes me, which, you know, what's out. So it's what's in, what's out. This is what I spend time, you know, this is a very, I guess, a trendy thing. I don't know. But it's what I like to do at this time of year as well. Um, and the tarot for this season is kind of wonderful for this type of self-exploration and inquiry. So um, the star is our very hopeful. There's a real sense of hope around the star for many folks. Um, it's our hopeful healer. <laughs> You know, the fool is our intrepid explorer and self-trust advocate. Um, and the page of swords is very much our resourceful and youthful truth seeker. Um, so there's a good sense of energy and, again, hopefulness about this card for many folks. Again, this is my brand of tarot. <laughs> this is Shine Time Tarot. Um, and so what you've read or seen about the cards could differ from reader to reader. Um, but there's, uh, I have a bit more of a coaching lens and perspective around the tarot. Um, and so that's what that's reflected when I share these, these things. So some general themes that we may feel pulled toward exploring the season might be things like um, personal healing modalities, um, all the little nuggets of healing things that we know feel good for us, our souls, our brains, our bodies. Um, Put them in a little bag, <laughs> collecting them, put them in a little bag and and sort of exploring which ones might be best for us. So um, that's important for a lot of people. Processing and release work can be really great here. Um, time for quiet reflection and meditation, if that's your thing. It's not my thing. 
I could do breath work till the cows come home, but I cannot do meditation. Um, <laughs> my brain, I've got too busy a brain. Um, but anything that kind of, that connects you back in your body, that re helps you reflect on um, what's worked for you, what is working and what's no longer working, those kind of things. Oh, identifying what does and doesn't work. This is a good time for that. <laughs> Owning our personal truths, truths. Um, Self-reparation, making amends with ourself, which can be a big one to make amends with ourself around, again, one of my biggest, my biggest um, ethos around coaching the tarot is gentle curiosity, gentle curiosity, always and forever. So all these things I'm talking about are being really gentle and curious with ourselves. Um, but is there any repair that needs to be done around um, how we treated ourselves, the beliefs that, that no longer serve us, promises that you've made to yourself that maybe you haven't been able to stick with or whatever. Um, another great thing for this time of year is taking stock of how resourced we are, how resourced we already are. Um, often we have a, we are a lot more resourced than we think. We have a lot more support in place or available to us, uh, people who are willing to help and support us. Um, trainings <laughs> that you've maybe things you've maybe purchased and not done anything with yep I've got those books that we bought and not read I've got lots of those <laughs> so it's sort of a set it's an assessment time like what's available for me to explore what's available already available for me here um how resourced am I are there, are there any blanks or cracks in um how I need to be supported that I can maybe look more further into, but taking stock of how resourced we already are, as well as assessing our needs, our wants, our capabilities, our pace. I'm constantly being told and reminded to slow down. Um, so, and and to, to be intentional about what I'm doing, but I can move at a slower pace. I don't need to rush. When I start feeling rushed, uh, agitated, um, uh, you know, desperate, graspy, that's when I know things, I'm not in alignment. So it's like slowing down, slow down, you get your, you'll get your shit done, don't worry, slow down. Um, so some coaching considerations and questions you could ask yourself um, would be things like, what is your relationship to this season? Thinking back at previous years, this time of year, what was going on for you? How are you feeling? What kind of energy levels did you have? What was coming up for you at that time period? Are there any patterns for feelings, emotions, or interests at this time of year? Is there something that you keep being drawn to at this time of year to do? Do you want to like start walking more? Did you, do you feel pulled to like, I don't know, learn an instrument, <laughs> paint something? Um, right, like whatever it is, like we often, because there's more often, if we let ourselves have a bit more time around this season um, and quiet time and reflective time, we get drawn, we, we are aware of things that we're more interested in that, that we are drawn to. Um, what is your relationship to the idea of hibernation? When you think of hibernation, what does that feel like to you? Does it feel like needed, cozy, warm, um, supportive or does it feel restrictive and constricting and icky and you know that kind of thing so it'd be interesting to note that for yourself and um, how do you take stock of what's available for you here and now what is something that you've known needs to be amplified or changed or even released like we often have things that we're drawn to and that we're pulled to know that either are working really well and oh, I should do more of that. That feels good. My body is pulled to that. My, I'm pulled to doing that. I should, I, I could amplify. I don't like the word should. Um, I could amplify that a bit more. Maybe I could tweak that thing a bit more. Maybe I like it. I can give you a really quick example. I often feel pulled to have a really lovely morning time and an early morning time and I like to get up Sometimes of the year I like to get up around six or maybe even earlier and do my morning time stuff. But this time of year, I do not. I do not like that. I want to get up at half seven. <laughs> I want to get up at seven, half seven. And for some reason, I was really fighting to get up at six and then feeling not, it just, my morning stuff wasn't feeling good. But if I get up at half seven, if I get up a bit later, 
um, and shift things around to do my morning time stuff after I've had my morning walk, after dropping my son off at school, having my morning walk, and then having a bit of time to do that then. What a difference. So this time of year, I know I need more sleep. Um, this time of my life, I know I need more sleep. <laughs> this is why we check in all the time, especially as women, <laughs> where our bodies are changing all the time. Um, we need or more or less of things. That's okay. We're not like robots. We are living human beings. So we take care of ourselves in that way. <laughs> so um, what ways of healing feel best to you? This is a real lovely time, a really lovely time to explore healing things for us. Um, what feels good for us? How does your nervous system like to be soothed? What feels soothing? For me, it's long, slow wanders. I don't like, I'm, I'm talking, I go walk, I go long walks, but like, I go slow. <laughs> we're, we're wandering. We're, uh, you know, and if I go with somebody, we're walking and talking, we go for a long time, but there's often times that we're stopping and we're talking. <laughs> The dogs are running around us and we're just stopping and talking. We wander. <laughs> so that's what my nervous system likes. It likes to be in nature. I need to get outside in nature every day. I just need to. It's something that my body craves. My nervous system craves. My brain um, craves. My soul craves. So um, some people like dance and hyper, more hyper things that get their energy up and out. I do not. <laughs> I do love cold water. My body is pulled very strongly to cold water. It soothes me. It calms me down. It gets me back in my body, out of my head, which is a very busy place. Um, so what does your nervous system like? Right? How do you give yourself time and space to reflect, consider, relax, and slow down? Do you plan that in? Do you put them into your daily life? Are they a priority? How do you make them a priority? How do you plan it in? So really important things. For me, for me, for me, for me, my healing practices often come um, in the form of things that I feel compelled to do. There's a, a notion around feeling compelled, like a bodily compulsion. Um, things I'm very much strongly pulled to or that I engage in naturally. Things that I naturally lean towards and move towards. Getting outside, I've mentioned, slow walks, cold water, deep breathing, beautiful words. I love to, uh, deep breathing, not reading. Uh, beautiful words, pulling cards, of course, um, writing, firelight. These are things I feel really pulled to and compelled to engage with. I yearn to engage with these things. Like I'm feeling like I, I need to do them. I want to do them. My body and my mind, they feel best. And by best, I mean they feel soothed, inspired, at peace, calm, invigorated um, when I give myself time and space to engage in these things. Um, not in a checklist, a uh, must-do kind of way, but in a really gentle, curious way. <laughs> this theme comes up all the time. Um, this is about seeing where we can add some of these things that we feel really strongly compelled to do. This is a great time of year to consider these. Um, it's about exploring a daily way of life that allows us to fit them in. Might need to make space for that. How do we prioritize, again, how do we prioritize them? How do we make space for them and room for them? Um, and maybe it's about ritualizing some of these compelling things. I love the notion of ritualizing a behavior that is we feel compelled towards um, so that they serve our bodies, our minds and our souls. You know, when we are compelled towards certain activities or practices, it's often our body, mind, soul, heart's way of sharing with us what works best. So you feel really strongly drawn towards certain practices, behaviors, habits, activities. There may be something really... Uh, Maybe there's probably something really strongly in there for you around that. Um, Aquarius is an air sign, as we know. A lot of people assume it's water. I used to assume it was water. Duh. <laughs> and it's about, but it's about, about the carrying, the carrying of the water. <laughs> it's about the applying of healing waters. Like if you see the star like there's an active, active happening. There's the taking of the water. There's the pouring of the water back into the water. There's pouring of water on the land. There's taking care of our emotions. There's taking care of our bodies. It's like a whole thing, 
right? We're taken care of because water represents emotions and our inner feelings and our inner world um, and the land and pentacles and earth tends to, you know, um, represent our, our bodies a bit more. And then there's, of course, the stars in the sky and the air and the, it's like a whole thing, right? <laughs> it's a whole, it's one of the most beautiful cards. A lot of people feel really strongly, positively connected to this card and feel um, a lot of hope. There's a lot of hope in this card. There's a lot of growth and gentleness and it's yeah it's a beautiful card so it's about applying the healing waters right it's about know the knowing of and engaging in our healing things um it's an active energy it's not like just floating and you know waiting for things to happen it's about doing overthinking <laughs> it's about working with both the practical and the magic my favorite. <laughs> That's why I love this card. Um, so it's about being active in our own, being an active participant in our own healing and our own, um, yeah, our own healing and our own sort of um, care of ourselves, right? And being active in that. And when you think about being compelled towards certain things, compelled towards certain actions, activities, behaviors, habits, whatever, then you think, um, what is that compulsion? Where is it coming from? It's an action, right? You're, you're something and you wants to take action around this. So if there is something, some activity or way of being that you just feel completely compelled to engage with that you've noticed for a long time, you read books about it without realizing, you imagine holidays around it without realizing you imagine doing it with your loved ones without realizing you um are noticing a trend in your search engine <laughs> around it you know mine was wild swimming and cold water swimming um i've done it my whole life we um very lucky to have a place next to the pacific ocean in the winter time it's not like the atlantic it's not as cold but it's flipping cold <laughs> so compelled always compelled to go into cold water into rivers, into lakes, and always compelled. There's a thing for me in water and cold water in particular. Um, so that's my body, my soul pulling me back over and over and over again. And now I'm starting to listen. And maybe it's time to take that practice and embed it into your daily life as an as a ritualistic practice. So now I've got myself a little. It's a little. I mean, I barely fit in it, but it's like a little tub, like a cold water tub that lives outside. It's sitting at. 0.5 degrees today and I went in and it felt amazing. I'm compelled to be in cold water. It does something to my nervous system, to my body that speaks to me, that feels good, that is um, what I need. So I'm going to engage with that. Um, so maybe, and it's a daily life thing, right? I've, I've added it into my daily routine. So how do we embed and ritualize these things that we're compelled towards? Maybe it's time to gently ritualize this thing for yourself so that you signify to your whole self that it is a sacred thing. This healing thing that you know healed is healing some part of you, is contributing to your wellness in the best possible way, whatever that thing may be, how can you ritualize it? And how can you signify to yourself that it is a sacred thing? There's magic, right? in our everyday small things, in our mundane, right? My little walk I do every morning is a sacred thing for me. Other people are like, oh, she goes walking every day. Like there she is with her dog walking, <laughs> not walking, wandering, strolling. Um, but to me, it's sacred. And there's everything in it that tells me that's a sacred thing, right? Me popping in my little bath pot <laughs> outside. Um, it, yeah, you can see, you can see it. I've got it up on Instagram. It's hilarious. It's just a little pod. Um, I'm a big person. I, but surprisingly, it fit perfectly in it. I didn't think I would. Um, nothing fancy. These things don't have to be or tend to be necessarily fancy or exciting. That's our everyday mundane things. But I get in a little cold pot of water every day. Like, it's sacred to me, <laughs> you know? Um, and there's really magic there if we choose to see them as magic and as sacred. Um, so is that how do we allow ourselves to sanctify these everyday things for ourselves? 
that's Aquarius season, you know? That's what this opportunity is for us. It's about making sacred our healing things that feel healing and wonderful to us. So I hope you can take some time to find a compelling healing thing or two, um, but just one you can start with that you really allow yourself to get curious about and engage in over this next month. I think that doing that will open up a lot of other things for you. So I'd love to hear about it, what your sacred thing is going to be or what you know your sacred thing is or what you might explore is a sacred thing for you. Um, if this feels like a sort of, if this me talking about this and talking about the tarot in this way and talking about um, how we can approach ourselves feels like a, a self-exploration or healing modality that tickles your fancy, um, there's a couple of things you can do. You can join us over in the membership area on the website that is self-coaching with the tarot. Um, I'll be updating considerations for each of these seasons as the year goes on, along with lots of other wonderful members only content that is over there. Um, again, next time I do a tarot for the Zodiac season, it won't be as in depth as this because I'm going to save a lot of this kind of stuff for the members only area, but I wanted to share. So you had a sense of what would be there. I will still share some of the stuff, but yeah. So there's lots of uh, um, ways to engage over on the website as well. Uh, here's to a gently curious week. Lots of love. Thank you.